it's Reagan. I'm coming at you today in my coziest, softest cardigan surrounded by gloomy fall atmosphere and a fall candle to recommend today some cozy reading recommendations. Honestly, I can't think of anything much better than being all cozy and snuggled up and reading a book. So I thought it would be a great video topic to talk through some books that I think would be perfect to read snuggled up in bed on the weekend or just whenever you have a free time to be all cozy. That being said, I have some of my favorite books uh, to talk about today and that I think are just perfect for cozy weather. The first couple books I'm actually gonna chat through are middle grade fantasy. There is just something so charming and heartwarming uh, that I find in middle grade fantasy. It just has adventure at its heart and it just always brings a smile to my face if it's done really well. I think it kind of harkens to my love of Harry Potter and reading that during a cozy season as well. It's just, it's nice to see people work together, friendship wins, evil guy loses, and like it was a lot of fun and full of whimsy along the way. I just, I just love stories like that. So the first book I'm gonna recommend, the sequel comes out so, 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 so soon and I cannot wait and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, and this is the first book to a series, and this is the absolute most whimsical, so much fun middle grade novel. If you haven't read it yet, I implore you to pick it up. This follows our main character, Morgan, who is cursed. She has been told her whole life that all bad things that befall in the town she lives is her fault, so she's constantly repenting and apologizing for other people's bad luck. She's most of all blamed for her own personal curse, which says she will die on the eve of her 11th birthday. On her 11th birthday, she's swept away to this place called Nevermore by a very mysterious man who owns a very magical and whimsical hotel, which seemingly is always changing its decor. From there, she enters these trials to become part of this secret society. It's thrown into this like magical mystery I love this book one because I feel like the magic present is really unique. It plays on this idea of like bad luck, good luck. It's incredibly whimsical. There's a talking cat. The hotel setting is like Grand Budapest hotel vibes, but middle grade and magical. It's just so much fun. I love the main character so much. This is a book that really took me by surprise when I read it last year. Made my top books of the year. It's such a fun story and I think the absolute perfect book to basically give you like a heartwarming, fun, good time on a cozy, cold day. Next up is a series I haven't mentioned for a little while, and that is the Wandla middle grade series by Tony DeSilorizzi, the first one called The Search for Wandla. This is a really, really interesting science fiction middle grade story with beautiful full page illustrations that are just like incredible, and the coloration changes from book to book. This is a story that follows our main character, Wandla, who has lived her whole life in this very small, pod-like space. The only people she knows is her robot who was taking care of her her whole life. At the beginning of the story, her home is disturbed and she basically has to escape and she kind of encounters the outside world for the very first time. Only is our main character exploring so many new things and we get to see it through her eyes through wonderful illustrations, but she also begins to uncover a really dangerous and dark plot that's taking over this world. This is a really, really, really interesting and whimsical science fiction middle grade story that I loved so much. It's actually pretty dark. Uh, I've read all three books in this series. And while these books do look really long, you'll fly through them because of the illustrations and because the story is so absolutely engaging. We applaud Tony DeSilorizzi for creating a plot that's very dynamic and often pretty dark, but I really feel like it mirrors our world very well. I love this middle grade story. It's so lovely. Next up, I have Tempest and Slaughter by Tamara Pierce. The reason why I'm recommending this is because it has the greatest old school Harry Potter-ish vibes, kinda, in a YA fantasy story. This is a book that follows our main character, Aaron Draper, who is a young and very naturally talented wizard. And he goes to a magic school there. He meets new friends who are also incredibly talented and they go on adventures together and basically uh, try to understand the world and the politics, but also like save the day. I allude to Harry Potter, not in the way that this book is anything like Harry Potter in plot or writing style, but it does give you magical school best friend trio vibes that I always love reading. It's honestly one of the most nostalgic, heartwarming tropes that I love to come across. So I have to shout it out because if you are also inter interested in that, this is the book for you. 
What makes this more interesting though is that this is actually a prequel to a very famous series by Tamara Pierce, Wild Magic series, and our main character in this is present in that as well, but as an adult. So this is a story that we follow him growing up as a child and basically encountering and growing to learn his powers. If you're a fan of Tamara Pierce's books, like myself, it's also particularly interesting because you begin to understand the origin to a lot of the different villains that are present later. I really loved this book. This is probably one of my favorite Tam Tamara Pierce books that I've ever read, and I've read quite a few of them. I just feel like it has a lot of rich atmosphere that really propels the story along. It's definitely kind of a slow burn, but I really loved the magical setting, and I really loved reading uh, Aram as a child. And I don't think you need to read any of her other books before reading this. You have plenty of context within the story itself. This is actually the book I started with, so... There. Next up, I have Strange to Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. If you want a beautiful lyrical story that will likely make you cry, ponder life and existence itself, this is the book for you. This is a story that is a dual perspective book set in a fantastical world. We follow one of our main characters, Lazo Strange, who is a historian and a scholar of the lost city of Weep. The city not only lost its name, but basically people forgot about its existence and where its location is until one day an envoy appears mysteriously and rather miraculously from the city of Weep and they begin to gather a bunch of experts in a variety of different fields, including Laszlo, who is a scholar of the city. There he begins to begin to uncover uh, the secrets of this town and begins to discover not only what happened, which caused the city to disappear entirely, but also realizing that the city is full of scars and so much pain and generational hatred towards a very complex problem and one of our other perspectives in this book. I love this book so much. It is such a beautiful tale, not only from its incredible writing style, but Lainey Taylor's an honestly very creative fantasy world, something I really have not encountered before. Uh, the magic that is present in this is just so unique, and I don't really want to give anything away because I find one of the best parts about this luscious and beautiful fantasy novel is slowly uncovering things for yourself, so that's why I'm always pretty vague on the synopsis. That being said, I feel like this is the absolute perfect book to read when you're cozied up in bed or on the couch. It's just miraculous. Speaking of cozy, I feel like you need to read a book that will make you feel freezing. And that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. I'm currently reading the sequel and I'm having a cozy good time with that one as well, but this is an incredible fantasy novel set in the wilderness of Russia. We follow our main character Vasya, who lives in the wilderness of Russia about the 1400s. In the town that Vasya lives in, it's a town that kind of combines old traditions and new traditions, both Orthodox Christianity and a lot of the old folklore that has existed in the land for a long time. However, when Vasya's father gets remarried, she's a very devout woman and wishes to banish the folklore from the town. However, when this begins to happen, Vasya realizes that a dark power is beginning to take over and creep through the forest. So it's up to her to save the day and save her family. This is a book that will make you feel cold to the core. It has such a fantastic atmosphere. It feels like a rich fairy tale come to life through the pages. Vasya as a main character is the perfect mix of endearing and charming and she's young enough that she, her headstrong like determination is so inspiring. I loved this as a first novel. I'm incredibly excited to see and continue to read the second novel. The Russia setting is immaculate and superb amazing book. It's not a cozy good time if you don't pick up a giant book, am I right? So I have to talk about The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, the first book to the Stormlight Archives and my honestly favorite series of all time. This is such an amazing fantasy, epic fantasy story that is going to be 10 books, I think separated in like five book chunks. It's long, but do not be intimidated by its size as I have found this book to be one of the most approachable fantasy novels, especially of this density. Uh, in a long time. The characters are incredibly engaging and approachable. The writing style is very entertaining, very easy to read, and Brandon Sanderson makes wonderful plots that will keep you on the edge of your seat, but they're not so overly complicated in the way that you are confused and having to backtrack and read from multiple different perspectives. Passive characters are lovable and hateable and everything in between. Stormlight Archives is a huge world. I can't go into it so specifics as to why, but life and death and the universe are at stakes. Uh, I love this series so much. I flew through the three books. It's a perfect book to pick up this winter. Definitely read it. Last up, I thought it was only appropriate to recommend a historical fiction novel, and I'm going with The Nightingale by Christina Hanna. 
This is a book that I read a few years ago and one that I still recommend to so many people like IRL, any coworker who likes historical fiction, I'm like, have you read The Nightingale? It's amazing. It's a World War II novel set in France. We follow two different sisters basically enduring and surviving the war, the war in very different ways. This is a book that really focuses on the people left at home and the individual strength that people have to go through to survive and protect their family. Often we get tales, rightly so, of soldiers on the front line, but this is a story that follows women and children and individuals left, and particularly in France where their home has become a new front line and their own way of surviving, enduring, and fighting back is very different. One of the sisters in the story joins the French resistance and another just tries to keep the one she loves safe. It is such a beautiful story. That this is a story that is so beautiful. It really shows and showcases the power of women, sisterly love, familial love, and just like strength and some of the darkest times. I love this book. Krista Hanna's writing is one that you just buzz through. It's descriptive and beautiful, but it's not dense and like overly full of flourishes. And I personally really like that. I read this book very, very quickly and it left me a mess at the end. I love World War II fiction. I could not recommend this book more. It's so good. Hey right, guys, those are my cozy reading recommendations. Let me know down below some books you think would be perfect to read during a cozy night in, as I would love to know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye.